I was doing everything to create the perfect life. I married my best friend, had a house with land in Hawaii, had plans for a family, had started a business, and even had other business plans. It was everything I had dreamt of. But there I was in July 2019, getting on a plane with what I could carry, trying to make sense of my reality and what happened. But maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. I didn't have many goals or aspirations in high school, so when a friend asked me if I wanted to listen to the Army recruiter, I said, sure, why not? And it sounded great. The Army would provide me with clear direction, a career path, free college, stability, and an opportunity to be self-reliant. Three weeks after high school, I left for the Army as an air traffic controller, and my entire life changed. And I thrived in the Army, quickly gaining rank and growing into leadership positions. I even earned a Bronze Star during my second deployment to Iraq. The community and family that we created with each other was like nothing I had before. These people became your brothers and sisters, not only those that you relied to have your back in the desert, but at home too. And even though there were parts that I loved, earning rank meant less controlling and more managing. And all of my friends were moving on to different places, and now I had a choice, to deploy to Afghanistan or to get out. So I moved to California, focused on college, and had a challenging year transitioning back to civilian life. I jumped on the opportunity to move back to Hawaii and live with an old army friend and his family while I waited for my first air traffic controller job as a civilian. And not long after, I met Travis, and I fell hard. I sought to create the family life that I yearned for growing up. And marriage was the first step to that idea. That's why we got married after two months. <laughs> Didn't tell any of our family. And started to plan out this future together. And not long after that, I was reliving my childhood of chaos, filled with substance abuse, fighting every single day, and finding refuge in my work. And those red flags felt like home. I didn't think my needs mattered. I didn't ask for help. I didn't let anybody in. I felt stuck, and it wasn't getting any better. And finally, there was a chance for change. I was offered my dream job in the FAA. We were going to move to California. I was on my way to six figures. We talked about how our life would change, what we would do differently, and having this fresh start. And the first day that I had a separation from that relationship, because he went home for a month, I realized it's not gonna change. This is not the life that I envisioned. I was 20 grand in debt, had random people messaging me about money that he owed, I even considered giving my dog away to avoid his abuse. I told myself <clears throat> I wasn't going to do this. I told him I wanted a divorce. And I didn't look back. I moved to California, and my life changed. And I was going to do things differently this time. I was going to focus on myself, enjoy life a bit. I started training in this new position, making friends with my new coworkers, and soon started to catch feelings for one. And he was completely different. We were friends. He brought healthy habits into my life. We traveled, surfed, played video games together. I was even able to finish my master's degree. He helped me through a lot, emotionally and financially. Between my divorce, losing my mom to cancer, and the national tension in 2016, I reevaluated my life. I deleted social media, 
and I moved to Oahu to be closer to his new job on the Big Island. I spent the next year traveling between the islands to visit and then eventually help with the home and the business. And I spent a lot of time with myself that year. Living just five minutes from my favorite surf spot, I got certified as a personal trainer, and I even went vegan for a bit. <laughs> he bought a home with over an acre of land and more fruit than we knew what to do with. My values continued to shift, and I was finding fulfillment in more than just my career. So I left my job, and I moved to the Big Island and took a different government position. We dreamt up business ideas together and envisioned a future of working for ourselves. My dad married us in our front yard. I was gardening, going to the gym, and remained consistent with these healthy habits. But something was off. My husband would tell me that I was angry, but I felt misunderstood and not heard. I've been here before. I told myself, I will not do this again. I even have tattoos as reminders. <laughs> and that familiarity was the catalyst to change. So I took advantage of my hour commute. I started listening to podcasts and books, determined to work my way out of this darkness. I came across a podcast titled, Do You Want to Be Happy? Yes, please. <laughs> Tony and Sage Robbins spoke with Michael Singer about his book, Untethered Soul, which is all about putting an end to habitual thoughts and emotions that limit your consciousness. And this immediately resonated with me. I was going to practice observing my thoughts and consciously make an effort to change them. I became accountable for my actions and my choices. I started reading more, journaling, I even added cardio into my routine. <laughs> I felt like I was finding myself again. I created a deeper connection with food, made a new girlfriend from the gym, and started exploring different business ideas. And after selling pre-made salads and snacks, I landed on health coaching and started studying. And as I was working my way out of this hole, my relationship was falling into one. Anything would lead to an argument. We were not on the same page. I tried to incorporate the things that I was learning, approaching conversations from different perspectives, but it wasn't working. We were together for five years. We had a very healthy and routine life. However, neither of us were taught about mental health. It was nothing that our families talked about, and it was not a conversation that was encouraged by the military or air traffic at that time. And we believed that anything on your record would result in losing your job and any future opportunity. So why would you jeopardize a career that allowed you to no longer feel like you were in survival mode even though it's your everything to survive. The intensity of our fights was increasing, and thinking that some space would help us, I flew to Alaska for five days to run a half marathon with my dad. I came back to a completely different life. My husband had a psychotic break, I knew nothing about mental illness, let alone how to be a caretaker. Every moment was unpredictable. I looked into ways that the VA could help us. I even called the caretaker crisis hotline when I just needed someone to listen. I tried, but I wasn't helping either of us. And in July 2019, I made the painful decision to leave, which takes us to the beginning of this story. Everything I had worked toward 
was gone in an instant. I was in my dad's basement in Alaska with no plan. So with nothing to lose, I did the one thing that I do best. I try to improve anything around me. <laughs> I shared with my dad my idea on how I wanted to change people's relationship with food the way that I had changed mine. My dad believed in me, even though I didn't. And two weeks after landing here, I figured out a name and got a business license. And next was the logo. I reconnected with Lacey, an old army friend, and we shared the last 10 years since we were in Iraq together controlling traffic. And this darkness that we now both felt stuck in. I started talking to her every day. She allowed that space for me to explore what had happened in my reality. and was really the first person that I ever had to talk to about mental health. She told me to keep going, it'll get easier, and believed in me when I didn't. Again, I was determined to work my way out of this. I used the business as a distraction as I seeked out therapy and struggled with this new reality of living at home and witnessing my parents' parenting, which showed me what shaped many of my limiting ideas and beliefs. I frequented my therapist with challenging thoughts about fear, perception, and relationships. Many days were filled with tears. I even started wearing waterproof mascara. <laughs> Losing everything pushed me to have a completely different outlook on life. I devoted myself to personal development and my true healing came when I addressed the emotional stress and trauma buried deep within me. And as the months passed, the days became easier and my confidence grew. I put action towards being the woman that I envisioned, personally and professionally. I changed my narrative, practiced being intentional with my word, and put myself first. I still go to therapy, I practice healthy boundaries, and constantly work to maintain a healthy work-life balance. And all of this work has rippled through everything around me. I escaped to Alaska almost three years ago. My dad encouraged me to put action behind my words. And now, I get to wake up every day and help people become better people, sharing the message that you can elevate your life through change. I've fostered meaningful relationships and for the first time have become such part of such a rich community. I'm always on a new adventure, exploring the outdoors. I get to be a big sister to my little brothers and teach them all the things I wish someone taught me growing up. Lacey and I reconnected during the darkest parts of our lives, and now we're devoted to spreading the message that living a better life is possible through food, connection, and authenticity. And my pursuit of fulfillment has taught me that it starts from within. Be compassionate with yourself and let go, because you don't know what you don't know until you try. Thank you.